Shalom. We are in Parasha Shemini, which translates to eight. Now today I want to talk about the eighth day, but the context of the eighth day is basically what is in the previous Torah portion. Tzav. Now Tzav means Tzadik Vav, the changing of the Vav or man into the Tzadik, the righteous person or the more mature person, which we refer to as the priesthood. Now, Shimini, number eight, is preceded by number seven and number six. And where the number seven comes from <coughs> is the seven-day consecration, and number six is the letter Vav, this consecration of man, into transforming them or appointing them into the priesthood. So that is the six, seven, and eight. And then the eighth day is the first day of the new cycle where the priesthood are now uh, inaugurated and ready to facilitate the functions within the tabernacle, specifically the sacrificial system which is part of the restoration process that will make you tzaddik. So that's just the, the backdrop. Now what's interesting from the previous Torah portion, we re re read that they ate unleavened bread. And the unleavened bread relates to, it's the word matzah, and it relates to the time or the seven day feast called unleavened bread and it's preceded by Pesach, Passover, the day of preparation where the lamb was consumed and Passover is the first feast within the new cycle so it's like the eighth day in relation to festivals it's also in the first month which is the starting of the new yearly cycle which is the month of Nisan which is also relating to the number eight or the new beginning of the new month and the new year and the new feast cycle. So we see all those things correlate and support one another in relation to the word matzah or unleavened bread. Now matzah comes from the word matzatz which consists of the letters mem, tzadik, tzadik. Now tzadik means righteousness but now we have as a second tzaddik which means double righteousness so that basically points out to the uh, importance of becoming righteous or a higher level of righteousness so if you look at the priesthood in comparison to the people the people need to be righteous but the priesthood need to be more righteous and that righteousness is to know what is right and to do what is right in regards to their task or their role as the priesthood. Now this word matzatz is only found once. Oh, it actually means to drink, to suck, and it's in relation to a new baby drinking milk. So the additional tzaddik in, in relation to the meaning of the word matzatz is the breast of the mother feeding the new baby and that is now the revelation or the symbolism of the priesthood they are effectively the mothers that will nurture the babies the new people coming into the household of Yahweh so that's the context and where this word matzatz is the first found in scripture it's actually only found once in scripture and if something is only found once it emphasizes it even more, and that's in Isaiah 66. You have to read the whole Isaiah 66 to get the full content of what this is about. But it's basically Israel being born in one day, and it referred to her sucking and drinking the mother's milk. And that is the, the birth of Israel. So what we see in this parasha is the eighth day after the consecration or the process of the birth which relates to Pesach which relates to 
the nation leaving and that's the, the place in Egypt when you celebrate Pesach where you are born again that's a symbolism of that and it's also confirmed when you walk through the Red Sea which is the waters breaking open and then you get born into the wilderness and then you face the mountain which is basically the Torah of the mother or the guidelines of the mother within the household teaching her children the ways of Yahweh so that's just a, a beautiful picture of what it's all about now Isaiah 66 not only have the concept of that in verse 11 about the birth of Israel it also talks about in verse 3 rebuking uh, people defiling the tabernacle Yahweh don't want anyone to defile it and that is the responsibility of the priesthood that's underlined there um, in verse 3 and then verse 5 he referred to trembling at his word that's also something that both the priesthood and the people need to understand is to take Yahweh's word serious yesterday we look at taking away from the word adding to the word so this is what that means tremble at his word just keep it as it is and try to understand it the best of your abilities so you won't alter it in any way and just obey it because that's part of your cleansing process as you interact with the word at the labor where the priesthood teach you the ways of Yahweh and um, then later on in verse 15 it talks about the judgment of fire Yahweh is conceiving fire and his sword come against his enemies and that's also a theme that we see in this Torah portion we see the fire of Yahweh lighting the brazen altar and then we see the fire of Yahweh consuming this, uh, the, the two sons of Aaron Nadab and Abihu who, who brought strange fire who altered the word who didn't tremble at it and he's, and he's basically rebuking um, or set an example of his rebuke for his leaders within the household of Elohim and then verse 17 talks about the people who hide behind the tree in the center of the garden eating abominable things and they will get the same judgment as the, as the nations who are basically doing the same thing and that's a symbol of grace the tree is a symbol of grace it refers to the tree in the garden of Eden and people are hiding behind it because they are now part of Israel we're born again we're children of God kind of thing and it's specifically mentioned eating now we touched on this before it's through eating that the fall of man came to be and this Torah portion Shemini ends with the topic of eating what is food the definition of food and the definition of things that are abominable to Yahweh and in Isaiah 66 we see what is the judgment upon those who hide behind grace and who eat the abominable things very important for us to understand and it's a fundamental truth so the whole topic of kosher clean eating and it's part of your cleansing process that um, takes place at the laver where you need to uh, cleanse yourself and this is specifically for the priesthood for those who um, want to become part of the priests as they mature in the household and to help and assist within the body of Mashiach um, not only that Yahweh has got a calling for each one of us and we should walk in his plan for our lives and a lot of us are chosen to be part of the priesthood so we should adhere to the cleansing processes even food now we think food is not a big deal it's only you know practical things because they didn't have fridges that's why we're not supposed to eat this or that no it's not that it's unclean it's not designed as food and you will not eat it a quick reference to what food is if you see what they brought into the temple to sacrifice you are a temple of your body is a temple and will you bring swine into the temple of Yahweh if the answer is no because the priest didn't do that Yahweh didn't command it not part of the sacrificial system to sacrifice swine and then for the priests and the people to eat of it therefore you will not bring swine inside of your temple because every time you eat it should be a reminder 
that you obey Yahweh's instructions and this is part of my cleansing process I'm sorting out my life and I start with food because that's the essence of what life is about and if I have that first building block in place the rest will follow if people struggle with the kosher laws they will struggle with the rest of the Torah as well and eventually they will backslide and not follow Yahweh's things anymore so I just want to leave you with that very interesting Torah portion remember the context is the center of the Torah the two um, places where the center words of the Torah is found and the center letter the Vav and the consecration of the Vav which is making that Vav a double tzaddik or to anoint the master priests or the mothers that will nurture the babies at the birth of Yisrael within your time, within your life, within your household, within your community and within your fellowship. So I leave you with that and I hope you have a lovely day and I will speak to you soon. Shalom.